<sighs> Hello. Hello. Welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I hope the picture's all right. Recording this. Is it twilight? I don't know. About half past six ish in the evening. And, um,. It's still light outside, but it's not like lighty, lighty, light, 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 you know. It's more mm, dully, a little bit dully dull. Yeah, that made sense when I said it, I thought. And then I heard the words come out of my mouth and it didn't make so much sense. Dully, dull, dull, brighty, bright, 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 bright. So, hey, check out my website, jasonnewland.com. It's groovy. I've added a few more things on there. Uh, the first page is all the latest recordings, audio recordings. But I've also got sections for videos, which will take you to a page which has all the videos from YouTube. That's a page within the website. There's also a YouTube link which you can click to YouTube, the YouTube channel. I've also got, at the moment, uh, 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 Jason Chats videos. You can click on that, Jason Chats. There's a few old videos from, like, blimey, six, seven years ago. I might add some more if I find them. Uh, and also there's... Andre videos as well, so videos of Andre, and there's also a section with old videos, like really old ones, from maybe 10, 15 years ago, so yeah, it's 176 of them, Whoa. so it's basically a playlist, and you can just click down which whatever you want to listen to, watch rather, and it just sounds funny to laugh at, really. Or you could just look at me now and it's have a good laugh. So yeah, I'm still not sure what I'm going to do with the YouTube channel as far as uploading all the old videos because I'm starting to get a bit bored of doing it, if I'm honest with you. And the plan was to upload all the old stuff and then start making new videos like this because I haven't made a video like this for oh, quite a while and even when I do do them it's quite sporadic unlike the podcasts which are quite regular so <clears throat> I don't know, for some reason, for some reason, the the more popular videos on YouTube are the ones where I show my funny face. I don't quite understand that, to be honest, because the audio, especially the hypnosis-y stuff, the audio is better quality, possibly, on the recordings without, well, I'm not, like, on screen. And... There's no distraction. And also with, I'm guessing, with the hypnosis stuff, people would have their, or the relaxation recordings or the sleep recordings, people who are viewing them videos, them videos would have their eyes closed during, you know. That's why I always say only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Because I assumed that a lot of people would have their eyes closed. I know I would. Sometimes I do. When I make recordings, I have my eyes closed. Um, even when I make these ones where I'm awake. Not that I'm not awake when I make the other ones, but I do fall asleep sometimes when making the other ones. 
yeah. So, um, I want to. I'm going to talk a little bit. I'm just that's, that's the update on the website side of things. Still in the process of building the podcasts on the actual website because that's a it's a big job. And I couldn't be bothered to do anything today on that. But I've added some pages and made it a bit better. And the problem I have, and it's probably a good problem to have, is I've got too much stuff. I didn't think I'd ever say that. I've got too many recordings. Thousands of recordings. That's without the music. That's, that's just on their own, without any background music about five hours or 10 hour versions just on their own thousands and it's a lot to kind of organize you know I'm trying to organize them not just for well mainly for the audience but also for me so I can kind of see what I've done and maybe revisit and see if there's anything good because I figure out of all those recordings there must be a couple of decent ones must be at least two, two good recordings out there. And another reason why I've tried to, you know, thinking about putting everything onto YouTube is that way it's also a backup. So I'm trying to, because I've lost so much of my material, so much of my recordings well over a thousand recordings over the years um, just through having not backed up the stuff correctly. So I've now got a hard drive. I've got three hard drives. Sounds dodgy, but it's not dodgy. Three hard drives. So I've got one for all the videos. Well, it's all the videos that I upload to YouTube. So all the videos, whether they're me on screen or not, are all on one hard drive. They're also on YouTube. And I might also do a YouTube backup channel as well. So all the stuff's on YouTube. Not all all the videos so far that I've created. I think there might be a few that aren't. So I've got to look into that. And all the audios are on the, the MP3 files from podcasts are all on a different um, hard drive. And then the third hard drive, porn, (laughs) no. On the third hard drive is just bits and bobs, like old photographs, family photographs. And um, so I've been going through that one because that was the original one, so that's where I found videos of Andre, old pictures of Andre, and so I'm trying to put that together. And my intention is to put together a nice video, like a tribute to him, um, with lots of pictures and video clips, all in one video. It might last like an hour, but Perhaps it's too long, but you know, I'll probably be the only one watching it. The thing is, a lot of the clips I've got on there are only f- a few seconds long. There's a couple that are a few minutes, but there's not many long videos of him. Because he was a ferret and he didn't sit still for two seconds. You know, I used to creep up on him. Again, sounds weird. When he was asleep, on the bed, or wherever, but I'd sneak up. Just try and get a decent picture with his, his little tongue sticking out. And, uh, and occasionally I'll do it. I'll get a picture. But it was hard because as soon as he saw I was going to do a picture, he'd move. And sometimes I'd have to turn the light on in order to actually get a picture. And that would well, startle him probably. And like, ah. But when he was completely asleep, Nothing could wake him up. Seriously, you could play a drum set inside his ear and it wouldn't wake him up. It'd be a very small drum set, but, you know, the point is he was gone, completely gone. 
almost I suppose like hibernation ish 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 so yeah um what else I would like to do some Jason chats, but the Jason chats are very, very similar to the Let Me Boy to Sleep, except they're a bit more, I guess, more honest in a sense of, I talk about things that I wouldn't talk about in these Let Me Boy to Sleep. Things that I might brush over, I might touch over, I might mildly stroke. In these recordings, I'll actually get full in and get right in there with the Jason chats. Uh, you know, things like mental health issues and various stuff that I've been through or that's happened, you know. But moving on, this is something that probably should be for the Jason chats, but I'm going to talk about it on here anyway. Just briefly, just to say thank you, uh, I don't have my laptop on because where the camera is that's where the laptop goes which means I can't get access to the laptop there's too much stuff on here but I've I've got audible and I got a book on audible if you don't know what audible is it's basically audible books audio books so I've got an Audible book download of, I forget her name, Beatty. Joseph, Joanne Beatty. And it's about co codependence. I think it's codependence no more. I think that's the name of it. So I've listened to it twice. It's eight hours long, the book. So I've listened to it twice. And... I can honestly say it's given me a different perspective upon, well, first of all, what I thought codependent. Can you hear Billy? He's basically barking. He's in the bedroom because he started barking. That's why I put him in the bedroom. He's now barking at someone in the garden. It's very loud, isn't it? He just doesn't stop. I don't know why. I think, is he protecting the place or is he just excited? Because, you know, there's there's theories. I, hear, I see theories online. He's protecting the place. But if I open the door right now, he would go down. And no matter who it was, he'd be excited to see them and try to kiss their face. How is that protecting the place? If someone was trying to break in here, if he could, he'd open the door for them. He's not trying to protect anything. I let him bark. He's on the windowsill in the bedroom. And... <laughs> Bless him. I don't like putting him in there. I've closed the door. I don't want him to put him in the bedroom, but... He goes from zero to 60 in an instant. Like, completely quiet, and then... Rah, 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 like really, 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 really quickly. Well, another dog's now barking back. So they're just talking to each other. Hey, how you doing? You all right? Yeah, I'm all right, thanks. Yeah, you? Yeah. Have you had your dinner yet? Yeah, yeah, I had something earlier. What do you have? Dog food. If he continues for much longer, I'm going to have to go out, go in there, close the window, remove him from this windowsill, and... Uh, Well, I just went and got him. I let him out of the bedroom. Um, he's now in here with me. The door's closed. 
We just had some food. If that shall I get him for you? All right. Right. <sighs> I managed to get on um, Vinny, rather, to cuddle, to get up here. He doesn't like being held, especially when I make him, you know, filming. He doesn't like it. Do you? Look. Hey. Hey. He doesn't like it at all. You want to say hello to everyone? You want to say hello? Hello. Hey. Okay, what's this? Look. There you go, blimey. He doesn't want to be up here. I thought about doing a... Having some kind of thing behind me or next to me where he could just be sitting. But then I thought maybe I'd have to tie him, not tie him up, but... I have him on his lead that's attached to something so that he can be comfortable but he can't get off. Because it'd have to, no matter how high it was, he'd try and climb off or jump off. But then if he doesn't want to do that, then there's not really any point. I just think it'd be cute because he's so lovely, so cute, and you won't see or hear what I what happened just then, but he tried to. I tried to get coax him onto the settee with a treat so I could like pick him up and he knew straight away that's what I was trying to do. It's not the end of the world, I'm picking you up. It's like, what am I going to do? I'm not going to hurt him, am I? I'm not going to hurt you. Just doesn't, he's not a cuddly. He cuddles on his time when he chooses. If he wants to snuggle up to me, he will. But if I want to snuggle up to him, nah. It's a shame, really. Oh, well. You know, the amount of times I wake up in the morning or, you know, halfway through the night and he's proper cuddled, curled up to me. Uh, another thing he does is when I when I face the wall, because part, part of the bed is against the wall, um, the side bit, the side bit, yeah, one of the sides, not both sides, otherwise I'd struggle to get into the bed, wouldn't I? Let's say the door. Mind you, I have lived in bedrooms that were only only just bigger than the actual bed. Seriously, like, get in and that's it. All you had was the bed and just a little, a little wardrobe area at the bottom of the bed. You could just get in and climb onto the bed. Yeah. I think those were the days before rules, before landlord rules, you know, where a, house, a room had to be a certain width in order to be rented out. There was a lot of, when I was younger, there was a lot of box rooms that were rented out that weren't big enough. They weren't all itchy nose. They weren't. They weren't big enough. They they were for literally they were called box rooms. I thought they were called box rooms because they were kind of square. But that's most rooms, isn't it? I guess, well, apart from those that aren't. But I didn't realise it was actually called a box room because that's where you put your crap. That's where you you know you move into a room, move into a house, and the box room is where you just put all the rubbish, all the stuff that you don't want out. It's a storage room, basically. Where you keep your boxes. So, I've lived in a few rooms like that over the years. It's weird, because when I think about that, I realise how fortunate I am, even though it is late in life and, you know, I'm getting on now, but at least I'm not living there. At least I'm not living in those tiny little rooms anymore. But anyway, I did it for 30 years or 26 years, whatever it was. Well, let's, let's work it out. I got this flat when I was... In uh, 2015. April 2015. I left, I left school at 15. 
So 1986. So I was living in rooms and a couple of flats and just all different things for years. So from the age of 15 So from 1986, 96, 2006, 2016. So 28 years. I served my time. I served my time. And yeah. Anyway, not really relevant. I was laying down on my on my my, my left side facing the wall. Because normally I, I lay down on my right side to start with. And then after a while, because there's the the sideboard, sideboard, like the set of drawers on the right hand side. Because they say the bed's there. That's the bed. Like you, um, it's against the wall. The headboard is against the wall. There's a wall. So that there's that. There's a different wall. That wall, and then there's the wall crease corner thing and then there's another wall and that's where the side of the bed is and it goes all the way down and then there's a window and on the right hand side kind of where the pillows are because a double bed on the right side there's a set of drawers on top of those set of drawers is where I put my phone and I listen to music at night either I listen to music or I listen to, to like classical music, or I listen to an audio book, or sometimes I listen to LBC radio, or sometimes I listen to classic FM. But if I've got a subscription to a streaming service like audio, and you know, then I'll I might listen to that. So it's a mixture between that and Audible. And at the moment. Here's something worth doing if you if you've got an Apple not Apple if you've got an iPhone. I don't know if this is everywhere in the world or if it's even if it's everywhere in the UK, but there's um, an offer which is free. It's free Apple Music for two months, so I don't have to pay anything till the twenty fifth of August. It's not bad, is it? Because my Amazon run out, and it's a pound less than Amazon, so it's eleven ninety nine. Amazon is twelve ninety nine a month, so eleven ninety nine. And I do listen to a lot of music. I, I stopped. I cancelled it last month. The Amazon. Before that, I used to have Spotify. So I've tried all three. That's about it, isn't it? I don't know if there are any other three, any bigger ones. I didn't bother with Apple. I just didn't see. I never bothered with it. It's like, well, Amazon, Spotify. Spotify's kind of the most famous one, perhaps. So I had that for a few years on and off. And now I'm quite pleased with Apple. Apple Music. There's a lot of stuff on there. They've even got comedy albums, which I was very surprised because... I think on Amazon Music, they'll have the comedy albums, but they'll only have a few of the tracks on there. Which is pointless. There's no point having an album and then just having, let's say there's, and each track is like, I don't know, two minutes long, three minutes, because it's just stand-up comedy. And what's the point? There's no point listening to something if it's not got the whole thing. But on uh, Apple, so far... It's got the whole albums. I've not tried everything, but even things like Lenny Bruce. Um, from and the albums from the 50s, comedy albums from the 50s, the full albums on there. So I was very impressed. Uh, George Carlin, another one, that was from the early 70s. I think about 72. But the full album, Class Clown, um... Is it FM, AM, FM? 
I forget. It's, it's, I used to have all of his albums on tape in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s. But it's so nice. But though I think it's a weird way to think, perhaps. But I do wonder if this, if they're like suddenly there's a kind of end of the world scenario. But you know, this survivors. I'm a survivor, of course, in in my scenario, because it's fantasy. It hasn't happened yet, therefore it's fantasy. And I choose to survive. Sorry. So I'm in a bunker. What am I going to do for music? Because I do not own one CD, one record, one tape of music. Nothing. Everything streamed. And the internet probably, probably won't be around. If, you know, if everything kind of goes. And that seems a shame because really... To be prepared for that, because I know there are some people that are very prepared. They've got bunkers, they've got everything. And I imagine they've probably got libraries of books and uh, thousands of DVDs and CDs and probably multiple video record, uh, video players and CD players and all that stuff, you know, just for when one breaks. and they, So... I'm not very prepared. But there won't be any television, probably. I just see someone writing into me like, Dear Jason, never watched you on video before. So this is my first time, you know, observing a Let Me Boy to Sleep recording. Just spat them when I spoke. Um... I'm not sure how relaxing talking about World War Three is. I don't know if that's the most relaxing thing. I didn't mention war. I just said, you know, briefly covered over what might lead us there. But just, just talk about the bunker thing. Mind you, bunker, this, that doesn't bring a very nice, yeah, maybe not. But I do wonder, so should I start preparing? But it's not really any good for me because I live in a flat. I'm above, I'm not just above ground, I'm really above ground. So I don't have a bunker. Uh, I don't even know any holes. <laughs> you know, it's some people, you know, you know when you were a kid and you're exploring the countryside and you find a hole that's like under a, like a hill and it's, there's a there's a bear in there, so you kind of don't go in most of the year. Um, but, you know, it's like, oh, that's a nice place to go. If ever, you know, that's where I'm going to go. That's, that's, what, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hide in there for 10 years. Maybe not. Right, time for a song. When I fall in love, it will be completely... Just kidding, just kidding. Probably about for an hour. I don't know if that's how long it lasts. The love that is not, you know, that's uh, two minutes. Two minutes. I remember when I was younger, I was so good at being quick when it came to loving I timed it just really well between programs. You know, when the adverts were on, I could literally get everything done and still make myself a cup of tea in time for the next section of the program. My girlfriend at the time wasn't as impressed as me. Don't know why. Are you liking the grey? Because some people might not have seen me for years. Or they've watched some of the old videos that I posted and thought that was me now because they've not seen me before. And then they see me now and like, oh my God, you're so old. And the, yeah, yeah, that's because I am. I mean, there was a time when I made these videos and I didn't even have glasses. 
I had very few grey hairs. I had hair, blimey. I mean, this I've been growing this for about seven years. Look, don't you mean 53 years? No, because I shaved it seven years ago. I wonder what my hair would look like if I'd never had it cut. What would people look like if no one ever, 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 ever had the haircut? Imagine what a mess I'd look. I mean, it'd be like literally out there. It's too far. The, the lens doesn't even cover how far it would go. Because my hair is incredibly curly. Well, you can see little bits of it, like the sides, it goes curly there very puby and it's like just goes when it gets to a certain length there's some videos of me with longer hair and it does get curly seriously but I don't let my hair get very long I haven't done for but last time I let my hair get long long was in 2000 no 1994 because in 1991 I decided to grow my hair. I don't know what month it was. It might be like January, February, maybe March. Decided to grow my hair long. And it was one of the few things in life that I actually stuck at. I really, st I, I was determined. So I'd never had long hair. It, I had long hair. Okay, I did used to have quite long hair in the 70s and even the early 80s because that was the style not that I was stylish but everybody had thick curly hair you know generally in the 70s in the 80s that's the ninth that's the last century the 1980s and but once I started going to the sea cadets they was a shape they were shaving me head off not me head but shaving me Shaving me, just just me head, and all the way through, yeah, pretty much all the way through school, I had quite short hair. I do believe, um, I'm trying to think, I could show you some pictures of me, but I don't know where the pictures are. I don't know where the. Uh, I did it. My my dad put some pictures, like a photograph album, together, and um, it's a couple of years ago. There's pictures of me. There's one of me in my Sea Cadet uniform with my brother, who had uh, Air Cadets. He was in the Air Cadets, so he had his uniform on, and I had my uniform on, and it's amazing the difference in size between the two of us. So he was two years older. But it was so much bigger than me, like height wide, what in every way he was just bigger, and I looked so little. I was like eleven, twelve, so he would have been fourteen. And then there's a picture of me in my um, karate costume, with my I think it was a yellow belt or green belt on. It's weird because I found another picture of me when I did taekwondo shortly before I moved in here and uh, I'm standing there with exactly the same and that's called a costume but the same gi same get up but this time I'm so what 14 24 34 40 so it's 30 years later and it's amazing the difference in body like there's my belly just you can hardly see the belt you can see the sides of the belt but the front of the belt is covered with my belly didn't have that problem when I was when I was a kid in fact one of the problems I had was keeping the belt up because I was so skinny sometimes it was like you, you ever see those magic tricks where someone puts a, like a thing and they push it and the belt would just meet in the middle become untied because my waist was almost invisible just 
that made sense visually when I said it. Yeah. Well, Vinny's being good. He's now eating one of his bones. You know what I, I was thought I should do? What I could do is make a video of him while I'm doing this and just have him like in, in the corner just so you can have like a, 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 a Vinny cam. It's not a bad idea, you know. Hmm. So, ooh. I don't know if you can hear that. I've got downstairs uh, playing music now. Or someone, I don't know, somewhere, even a garden, I can't remember, can't really place where it's coming from. But I hope that you're not picking it up on here. But you might do, there's a chance. Uh, mm, I'm trying to think what else. Took Vinny, oh, I, did I tell you I've been doing um, press-ups? Exciting life I lead. I had a, I had a shower today as well. Yeah, that was so boring. Why did I even tell you that? Anyway, I had a shower. Tomorrow is election night, and I'm going to have a pizza. Yep. I've got to be careful now, because I can't eat sugar. I can't eat chocolate. I can't have fizzy drinks anymore. Anything with kind of high sugar... <laughs> Uh, I'm laughing because I just can't believe how rubbish things have got. But hey, it's okay. Um, I haven't had any sugar. In fact, I ran out of sugar two weeks ago. So I had no sugar in my tea for three weeks. Um, four weeks maybe actually, to be honest. I think the first week it was on and off. I started scraping the the tub which had the sugar in uh, so I had a little bit and just I was trying to cut it down so like half a teaspoon and then the second week I'd run out of sugar I think or nearly and it was just bits of sugar that I was trying to you know when the the sugar bowl or the tub has little bits of sugar just like around the edges I was trying to break that in and the third week I found some on the floor so I was trying to get that up and the fourth week, um, I saw something in the garden in the mud that looked like sugar, so I thought I'd try that. But basically, my stomach's gurgling, means I'm hungry, I think. Or well, my stomach's hungry. I. <laughs> on. On, 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 on. Yeah, so for the last two weeks, zero sugar. I don't think I've had any chocolate. No Coke. I very, I rarely drink Coke now anyway. But occasionally, I treat myself to a, a drink, a fizzy drink. Like every now and then, you know. Uh, there was a time when I would have about six cans of Coke a day. Those days, that's years ago. It's a long, I haven't done that for quite a while. I managed to cut down to four a day, and what was it, five? And gradually, because I think what happened is I used to drink cans of lager, like maybe six a night, and then I stopped. So I don't drink any alcohol ever now, just because I, I can't. Anything fizzy really causes me heartburn anyway. And also, yeah, I just stopped. And I think I replaced the alcohol with Coke. And then the Coke was gone. Well, I drink Coke during the week and only drink alcohol on a Saturday night. Maybe just have a few cans and that was it, you know. I don't do that anymore, so I've done that for years. And then I was drinking Coke a lot and then I stopped I'm not quite sure why I stopped I think oh uh, a couple of things I think someone kept knocking on the door asking for coke so that used to annoy me I 
Monaco as a shop. And also... I'm trying to think. Um... I don't know. I'm, I guess maybe to try and lose weight, trying to cut down a bit. And then what happened in, I think it was January. I think it was January. December, I think it was January. I had a toothache. And it was, never had anything like that in my life. It was absolutely awful. And I decided after that, after I managed to get that sorted, and um, never ever, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna drink choc, drink chocolate, I'm not gonna eat chocolate anymore, I'm not gonna drink coke anymore. Now I stuck to the coke, to to not drinking coke. Chocolate, kind of ease its way back into my life and into my mouth, very slowly. You know, I went weeks without eating any chocolate at all. And I'm in the petrol station. I hear this little voice. It says, Juicy JJ, over here, look. So I walk around and there's this uh, Mars bar and a Twix both tempting me and saying, look, there's a special offer. You can get both of us for just £1.50. And we're double size, you know, you like them big. It's a bit weird. So, uh, and I and I I I got a couple of chocolate bars. I didn't eat them. Okay, it's a lie. I didn't eat them straight away. However, <laughs> that's weird. I'm tired. But it is late in the day. If I'd done this earlier in the morning or earlier in the afternoon, I wouldn't have been so tired now. Which is the most obvious statement ever. <sighs> so, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, I had. I've been getting eye ache lately. So. I might close my eyes. I spend too much time looking at a computer screen. I need to reduce my eye time. Eye time? I could go to sleep. Mm. Yeah. Sleepy poos. <laughs> Mm. So, I quite like a nice roast dinner. Or, I have some potatoes. I could have potatoes with fish cakes or fish fingers. And some beans. The problem I've got is now whenever I order food, I go for low or no fat or low or no sugar. So the beans are those ones with no sugar, no fat, no, you know, it's like tasteless ones. The ones that you have to actually mix with lard just to make them taste like something, which kind of defeats the object. I am. Um, I got these rice cakes. Right? Are they rice cakes? Oh, wow. And some hummus. What's weird? Like last night, I got. What did I have? 
Right, so I had some tuna fish, a tin of tuna fish, like a little tuna tin. Um, some cucumber, some tomato, and some rice cakes. That, that was, and a yogurt, and a yogurt. Uh, and it's also a natural, no added anything yogurt. And all this healthy food, it's just, it feels wrong. And it's not the first time, not, not, not the first time that something's felt wrong, but it's not the first time that I've gone kind of healthy. Um, I've been a vegan, I've been a vegetarian, I've tried everything, not everything. But, you know, I've tried a lot of different things. Some things I just wouldn't try. But raw food, I've never really tried that. Although what I used to do, as I waggle my finger, I used to juice. Now, not in a bodybuilding sense, in a, like, carrots. Because that's the thing about carrots. I mean, they're pretty disgusting. I'm not a big fan of carrots. They can taste lovely if you add butter. You know, I don't mind the taste. I will eat carrots. That's another thing. I've never, ever added anything to my vegetables, generally, over the years. So if I... If I boil potatoes, because uh, what I would normally do is uh, I've only got one saucepan now. Because the other one, I used it for Logie, the, the other dog that was here for a couple of months. That was his uh, bowl for drinking out of because he was so big. So I had to use a big saucepan for him. And then. I didn't really want to use it after that, to be honest. So, oh, one saucepan. So this probably wouldn't work. But generally what I do is, there's a thing I used to do for years. I'd boil the potatoes. Then, once, no, no, I'd boil, I'd put, I'd make the water boiled. Put the potatoes, make, potatoes got to be small though, cut into small bits. And then I would add the vegetables. So I know potatoes are vegetables, but I'd add like carrots, broccoli, maybe cabbage, sprouts, love Brussels sprouts, and maybe some sweet corn even. And then I'd take it off the boil, take it off the hob that's got the, the hot hob, turn off everything, and just cover it over or just leave it doesn't have it doesn't even have to be covered over and just leave it for a couple of hours or an hour whatever usually if it's left long enough and it's covered over everything's cooked it's like your own little slow cooker slow boiler so i used to do that for a for years because especially if you've just got one saucepan so to try and cook, you're cooking things that take a different amount of time, it's just a bit easier if, you know, to do it that way. That's what I always found. Very effortless. Very simple. In fact, I wish I'd done it now. Yeah. But then potatoes don't take too long. Was it 20 minutes, half an hour? And they're done, aren't they? So there's no take a huge amount of time. Was that wind? Well. All right, so I'm laying on the bed, facing the wall. And I've got one leg kind of over the other. I don't know if I'm cuddling a duvet. Because I've got no one to love. And... Vinny climbs on my legs. He doesn't do it straight away, but when he thinks I'm asleep, he climbs on my legs and cuddles up in, into me. It's cute, isn't it? Oops, sorry. Sorry, mate. He's so... I annoy him a lot, honestly. He tolerates me, I think, just about. <laughs> so... Yeah, I might 
might do that. Tomorrow I've got a doctor's appointment on the phone. Which is just discussing my blood tests results. I mean I've already been told that I'm pre-diabetic and high cholesterol. That's the results I got already from the receptionist. So I'm going to discuss it more. Now, and this is a month ago. Maybe five weeks even. And in that time, I said what I've been doing is trying to make a few changes. So getting sugar down, or zero sugar really. I know there's always going to be sugar and stuff. And I do still eat processed food. I'm trying to reduce it. Like my breakfast cereal, I'm trying to eat stuff that isn't processed. Or everything's processed, but something that's got the least amount of other stuff in, other than what it's supposed to have. Um, fruit and veg, and you know, I'm not really a big meat eater, to be honest. Well, I do have some tuna fish, but I don't eat much in the way of uh, meat these days. And I still drink tea. I have one cup of coffee in the morning when I when I wake up with my breakfast. It's the only coffee I have, like one a, one a day. But since I don't have sugar, it's kind of tastes awful. Tea still tastes awful without sugar, but it tastes less awful than it used to after two or three weeks of having it it's starting to become less disgusting I mean I still don't finish the cup you know I, I, this morning I was thinking oh, why am I drinking tea I don't even want to drink a tea I was not going to have it or was it last night last night I decided I'm not going to have a cup of tea tomorrow morning or a cup of coffee and I woke up and it was cold it was like just after five o'clock in the morning and it wasn't warm even though it's what a third of July second of July third of yeah third of July it was cold I mean like cold it wasn't at all warm we know what cold is I know but just it just seems weird to say it was cold in July but it was cold and um I mean, really, it's July. Why have I got my... I've got a cardigan on. I shouldn't have to have a cardigan on in the summer. Not indoors, not really. Not really. So... What was I going to say? Oh, yeah, so... I'm thinking I'm not going to have a hot drink. This is this morning. But it's too cold. I need a hot drink. Just to give me some warmth, a little bit of warmth internally. I need something warm inside me. And is that a weird thing to say? I don't know. So I, that's what, I mean, I had, I did have, no, I didn't have any ready break. Ah, I didn't have any ready break. Uh, I'm going to try try to convert ready break into porridge so move away from the ready break and start having porridge and oats and like actually cooking them but i've got to move into that gradually because i do like porridge i used to eat porridge all the time like every day for quite a while but it's just going to take me a little bit of time to kind of move into that and it might sound weird but I need to move slowly, as I did with the sugar, as I did when I stopped drinking Coke, as I've done with the painkillers, because I have pain, pain relief medication for my arthritis, and I've managed to cut it in half. So but it's taken me months to do it. Um, I would like to get rid of the... I'd, li I'd like to get rid of the bipolar medication I mean I 
I'd like to have a full head of hair. I'd like to be six foot three. You know, there's lots of things I'd like. But uh, I've got a bald patch that's growing bigger every day. If anything, I'm shrinking, so I'm probably less than five foot eight. And um, I need that medication. I'm, I need something, so yeah and it's not a high dose either to be honest so I'm not it's not like a, maybe uh, in the future I can try something different or maybe there will be something new well I'm sure there will be something in the future that will be more useful hopefully but you know I'm getting on a bit well, I've done quite well I've never been never been sectioned I've never been ended up in hospital with it so I guess I'm quite fortunate from that perspective there's been a couple of times when I think I could have been had there been someone around that was actually taking notice of my behavior <laughs> um, but that's one of the maybe the benefits and the opposites to living alone is not so much because I've got Vinny, so I have to take him out, so I have to be around humans. But that period between having him, between Andre, between Andre and him, so that period of like a year and a half, um, I could be up here for days, weeks even, and wouldn't, you know, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, do sometimes like, oh, Vinny, I don't want to go out. Why? And he's like, yeah, well, go out. I don't want to. And he just stares at me. Sometimes I wake up and he's like staring at me. And he's on the floor staring at me. And I go back to sleep again. And I'm kind of, I'm on my back. I doze off. I wake up again and he's sitting next to me on the bed, staring at me. And I'm like, oh, oh, in a minute, in a minute, in a minute. And he's making noises like, <coughs> and like tapping me and stuff. And I fall asleep again and I wake up again. And he's, he's lying on, well, he's sitting on my chest. His face right in my, like staring at me like, <coughs> he starts licking my face and like, Got to go out now. Got to go, got to go, 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 go. Now, now, now. Oh. Sometimes he does it just because he doesn't want to be awake on his own. I'm sure it is. Doesn't want to go out. Doesn't want to do anything. Not even hungry. He just wants me to be awake because he's awake. But when he's asleep, that's it. He has to have 12 hours every night. If we go, honestly, I'm about to tell you, if we go to bed at 10, he's still in bed till 10 o'clock. We know what 12 hours is. I know, but I'm just, just saying for the fact that if we go to bed at 10, I'll wake up at, let's say, 5. I might go back to bed at 7, have another couple of hours, whatever. I get up at 9, he's still in bed. And then he'll just like, after about 12 hours, like, oh, morning. It's just, honestly, he's like got no intention of getting out of bed. It takes him a while to settle down at night. He's very um, reactive to the sounds of outside, the neighbours, music, doors closing, voices, anything like that. He really... It's very reactive for the first like half an hour when we go to bed. He's just fired and it's a really bad one. Yeah, it is his. <sighs> oh. <sighs> why does why do when dogs fart they always got their bums facing you? Why is that? Never farts when his his bum's never facing the other way when he farts. Ever. It's never happened. 
even when he lived over the road before he moved here, she, she the, the woman, his mum, said to me, whenever he fired, he was faced towards this building. Like, that's before I even met him. He knew. He knew the right place to fart, the right direction. So the plan for this week is tomorrow morning, doctor's appointment on the phone to discuss. All right, so there's that. And then it's election. So it's voting. And then all night long tomorrow is the election night. So I'm going to be up all night watching that on telly. I'll very likely fall asleep through it as well, but it's okay. And then I'll, I will uh, probably spend a fair bit of Friday asleep. But I just, I like the, I like the moments when people, when the results come in of constituencies, I can't say the word, constituencies, where it's a safe seat. So like a, you know, a politician that's almost guaranteed to to get their seat, to, to be elected in that area and they lose the seat. And just to see their face when someone else gets called out, that someone else's name gets called as having the higher number. Sometimes it's funny because occasionally... Occasionally, I found, it might just be me, but occasionally, very, very rarely, I've noticed that politicians, the occasional, very, you know, unlikely situation, but a minute amount of politicians are a little bit arrogant sometimes. They seem to come across as a little bit arrogant, a little bit very sure with themselves, very, um, almost like above the average person. A tiny, a tiny, tiny amount of them, of course. Not most of them, just a tiny, tiny amount. Where they got no idea about real life. But you know what? This is the way I see it. I've got two things to talk about. <clears throat> Biden, that will divide the nation. It's definitely divided one nation. And Sunak, who is our Prime Minister here. So the Prime Minister and the President of America and the Prime Minister of this country. He gets a lot of slack. People saying he doesn't know what real life is like. He's a rich. Well, being rich doesn't mean you don't know what real life is like. If you've got a human body, you know what it's like to be human. You know, you still got to go through the same thing as everyone else. Loss, rejection, illness, um, ageing, all that stuff. It's still just, it's just, just, everyone has to go through that, regardless of what money you got in the bank. And he's only like three foot tall, so he hasn't had it easy, you know? And then I think... If I'm right, he's, I might be wrong, but I think he's a Hindu, which means part of his religion is giving away a percentage of his money to charity. It's part of his, it's part of the religion to so do that. I might be getting it muddled up with Sikhs, but... And most of his money comes from his wife anyway, so give him a break. He's doing his best. Who would want that job? Who would want the job to, to lead a country? It's an impossible task. I mean, look at, um, I was going to say, look at say Hitler then for a second. Look at Churchill. Um, I've been thinking, I was watching, I, just, I watched a documentary about fascists the other night. Um, Mussolini and did you see the way he used to stand with his arms at his, at his waist it was uh, quite funny 
Just the he's what's that noise? All right. Anyway, um, Churchill saved this country, and some people no, he didn't. Actually, if 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 the history books are correct, if what's been seen is correct, then it might not be. But if it is, it probably isn't. But it pretty much definitely is. During the Second World War, and Churchill was Prime Minister, every all the major people in his cabinet wanted to surrender to Hitler or to Germany. They wanted to surrender. And Churchill said no. Or he said no. And... Can you imagine if everybody, if everyone else around you is saying we should do this, we need to surrender, and you're the only person saying no, it's got to be hard to go against what the popular view is. And, wow, imagine what would have happened if England had surrendered. Or, I don't know, what we, what was we back then? Britain? United Kingdom, I don't know what we was in the, during the war. But if we'd have surrendered, if, if Churchill had surrendered. But he didn't. He refused. And regardless of, you know, but the point, the point I'm trying was I was going towards is a few years later, I think he came back in as a, as a, Prime Minister again, so another, another, you know, so he was Prime Minister, then he wasn't for a few years, then he came back in, and he got kicked out. He was unpopular. And Labour got in, because they didn't like the Tories anymore, I think. But anyway, he got, yeah, he got kicked out, so he wasn't popular. But history shows him as being basically the saviour of this country. Some would argue that. I don't give a. I don't. Not interested in what anyone else has got to say. But I'm not even interested in what I've got to say, really, because it's just words, really. And uh, another thing I think about. Blimey, that sounds a bit vicious, that dog. Do you ever get... What is it about leaders, governmental leaders, when they become no longer human to the populace, to the general public? They're just things to mock, or like they're not even human, because... If I see an elderly man, regardless of what his role is, an elderly elderly man, elderly woman, who is struggling with their health, I just want to help them. Codependence. I just want to help them. And I don't think a lot of hatred towards the person in the same way as even with Rishi or with Boris, Alexander, Boris, Karloff, whatever his name was. They're clearly not well. I mean, he's got some, well, sometimes, you know, got, I mean, what's his name? Boris was really ill during during lockdown he went to hospital and he was very ill and there didn't seem to be a huge amount of caring towards him considering he was a prime minister there didn't seem to be a lot of interest in that it 
And then they've got this, uh, I don't know, talk about politics. It seems weird, because in America, they can't win whatever happens. There's no winning. It's, I'm smiling, just because it's almost like a weird situation. I don't think I've ever seen that before during my lifetime, I don't think. Or my, when I've sort of took notice of politics, which hasn't really started when I was about 17, I started to take more notice. It was, yeah, you see, it's like, oh, one's really old, but the other one's also like just a couple of years younger. So they're both really old. One's aged more than the other. And one doesn't necessarily make, one of them doesn't necessarily make too much sense. Um, it's not particularly coherent. And clearly he's got some, I'm not an expert, probably some kind of brain stuff going, going, you know, some kind of stuff going on, which has caused him to talk incoherent and to say stuff that doesn't necessarily make sense. And then you've got Biden, who's also struggling. See what I did there? We So... See, that, in a way, I'd, I'm not in any camp for that because I'm not in that country and I can't vote. The problem is <laughs> we are England or the UK, whatever you want to call us, Britain. Britain is America's lapdog. We have been for a long time. So anything that the president says, we just follow. This, this country, the government just follows for whatever reason. Um, probably because America are the only country that really will look out for us. We were not made, even in Europe, look, we're not made huge friends around the world. And I know we're part of the UN and stuff, but outside of tourism, I don't, we don't necessarily offer much to other countries. You know, tourism is good for people, other countries, because we, because they rely on the West sometimes, or England area. I don't know what I'm talking about, really. I don't care. It's just, I find it interesting. Because in America, America, an Americi, Americano, no one's going to win. They can't. They can't. Because you've got what happened with Brexit in here. It's divided the nation. Divided the nation here. And every time there's an election... or Nigel Farage kind of comes along, starts dividing people. And it's the whole divide and conquer thing. And it's, if you look at fascism and how it all kind of started in Italy, it's very fascinating. Very fat. I spent about two hours watching this documentary. It was only an hour and a half long, but I'm a bit slow. And... It was just that whole getting people to be, you know, to love in their country and we're going to put you first. We, you know, let's say we're going to put the people in this country first, not people from other countries that come into this country. We're going to make sure that everyone has good jobs that are born in this country and 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 it's kind of like a bully in a sense of like a bully would start off 
bullying one person and all the crowd gather around like just enjoying it get to school kids can be a bit cruel like that and then after a while all the other kids start to get scared of that kid because they realize that he doesn't just do it to one person he does it he might he has done it to another person they've seen that and he might do it to me and everyone's like on eggshells around this per this one person it's 200 kids all scared of one boy hmm. just because he happens to have gone through puberty a lot earlier so he's got muscles and he's got a deep voice and he's stronger 200 kids in a year maybe scared of this one boy so it's I've clearly got stuff from school that I need to work on <sighs> I was alright actually I got on with both people I used to bore them. I remember I had one person who wanted to have a fight with me and at the end of it he just lay down and went to sleep. I just talked to him or talked at him for about three minutes and that was it. He's like, oh, I don't. I said, I thought you were going to have a fight. He said, no, that's all right. I just need to... just need to lay down on my pillow. I don't know why he had a pillow on him. That was weird. Who'd carry a pillow around with them? It's not very tough. So. I do find. What I find interesting. And I've seen it in this country as well. As we're leading up to this election. A lot of elections going on. What Spain. What was it. Um, France. Uh, wasn't there a part of Africa. Just had an election. I think India. Different places having these elections. America's in what December or was it November? So and that'll be here before we know it. Facebook. I see people and these aren't well some of them are my friends on Facebook. I don't know them, they just happen to have been on Facebook for years and don't know why they were on my friends list, some of them. Don't know who they are. But they post stuff like anti one person regarding, you know, the election, the upcoming election, whether it's in America or the UK. And they're so vicious. They say such horrible things. But in the post, then there's like, and if you agree if you if you vote for that person, then you're dumb and an idiot and stupid. So, it's quite a blanket statement, isn't it? So you're calling all your a lot of your friends, maybe family members, stupid and idiots because they have a different view to you. They have a different political belief system. And I don't... I sometimes think that we should, well, maybe... I know I had to, I remember seeing this bloke he, it's not that long ago saying I would never be friends with someone that doesn't have the same beliefs as me. That's a bit that seems dumb. I've never had friends that had the same beliefs as me. That you know I've had the same I mean okay if you if you talk about religious beliefs and yeah I can understand you it's easier to be around other Buddhists if you're a Buddhist. It's just easier to be a Buddhist if you're around because, I don't know, you know if you're like watching telly with a non-Buddhist and then you start chanting and stuff like that. Just it's, some, some people might think it's weird. But if you're a Buddhist, because that's all they do is chant all the time. Um... Or, you know, if you've got a religion where you have to pray a certain amount of times a day, it doesn't fit into someone else's religion, perhaps, or someone that's not really into religion. So I can see why being 
around other people that have similar lifestyles, let's say. But when it comes to politics, I mean, I had this friend who had a son and they fell out, really fell out. And he was only like 18, 19. And she said, he just he just got different different beliefs to me when it comes to politics and stuff like that. And I said, so? So what? He said, well, he annoys me. And he's, he's, he, he, she, I don't like being around people that have different beliefs. I said, he's not your friend. He's your son. It doesn't matter what his beliefs are. It matters if he's being aggressive and stuff, obviously. But, like, he's allowed to have different opinions to you. That's one of the rights of human beings, is to have different opinions. And let's face it. What are opinions anyway? So, I genuinely don't know what they are. I need to look it up, but I can't because my laptop's turned off. And now someone's drilling, so I better bring an end to this. Bloody hell. So, thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye.